Hey guys, it's Geeky Rocket here, and today I'll be showing you guys how I go about uh, priming my scale models. Uh, today's subject will be the uh, Trumpeter's 135th scale T62 model 1960 that I've been uh, working on over the past little while. Now, priming is not an essential uh, first step in the painting phase, and I've seen a lot of excellent finishes by uh, guys who who choose not to prime their prime their models. However, this is something that I've always done as a as a foundation uh, to the uh, subsequent painting uh, steps, and uh, I I've done it in the past, and I will continue to do it uh, for two main reasons. Uh, first off. A primer, in essence, uh, provides a strong foundation for all subsequent uh, painting uh, to adhere to and bond to. Um, this will uh, come into uh, great effect uh, when uh, weathering with enamels or uh, oils. So depending on how strong your thinners are for those uh, weathering products, uh, sometimes it can actually start to eat away at your, uh, at your paint. So a good strong foundation uh, to, uh, to allow uh, whether it's your base uh, coat or your camouflage layers to really adhere to uh, is, it really pays off in the end and provides a really strong finish. Uh, second off, it also allows you to um, kind of have a review of your of your model after after the initial prime coat uh, for any imperfections in the construction that may have occurred. Uh, it allows you to really uh, Kind of go back and, and rework any areas without getting too uh, too deep into uh, the painting uh, stage. So that's that's pretty much why I recommend uh, priming. And again, this isn't something you have to do, but uh, it's a staple in, in, in my process. The products that we'll be using uh, today will be uh, Ammo's MIG uh, Black Surface Primer. Uh, this is a true acrylic paint and it will act not only as a primer but also the uh, first shadow coat. Uh, I will be trying out a modified black and white technique. Uh, so this will be a great uh, primer to go down on as, as the first coat. Uh, and Later on I will also be talking a little bit about the nuances uh, that uh, you should be aware, aware of when, when using uh, true acrylic paint. So we'll dive into that a little deeper later on. I'll also be uh, showing you guys uh, basically the uh, parameters that I use on my uh, on my air compressor so the uh, correct air pressure that you should be using as well as going over uh, the mixing ratio of, uh, of the paint so without further ado uh, let's get back into it jump back into the trenches Now the airbrush that we'll be using today is Iwata's HPC Plus Dual Action Gravity Feed Airbrush. It's got a 0.3 millimeter nozzle and it is well suited for all priming, base coating and most camouflage uh, painting. Uh, you can obtain a really nice crisp fine line with this airbrush and it is extremely versatile. This is certainly the workhorse of most of my airbrushing work. Uh, the Iwata's are typically uh, more expensive than most. It's not the most expensive, but uh, I would definitely recommend investing in a uh, tool of this caliber because it'll last you um, decades. This has lasted me well over 10 years already, uh, and there's no, uh, no sign of it slowing down. This is my Model Master airbrush compressor. It has roughly a 0.8 gallon or 3 liter tank attached to it. Uh, I would highly recommend airbrushing with, uh, with an air compressor that has an air tank attached already to it. Uh, this allows for a constant and consistent airflow uh, from your compressor, which is very important when, when, when spraying. Um, now, spraying acrylics, it's, it's recommended to spray at 1.75 bar, which is roughly 25 PSI. I myself like to spray at uh, slightly lower uh, PSI, uh, roughly 21 or 22 PSI, only because I, I actually dilute my paints a little bit uh, more than what they recommend. Um, that's just my comfort level. I find I get really good results with it and it lays down nice, smooth, and flat. Now when calibrating the regulator on your air compressor, it's important to set it to the desired operating pressure. Now what I mean by that is I spray at 
22, 21 PSI. However, you'll notice that right now the needle is showing roughly 25 PSI. But when you start to start to airbrush and you pull down on the trigger, you're gonna notice that your needle is now gonna actually dip. The needle when operating your airbrush is now showing the desired 22 PSI, which is exactly what you want. Well, that's it for the equipment overview. Now we'll jump into model prep. Now when entering any painting phase, especially the first time you're about to apply paint to your model, it's important to ensure that there is no dust or debris uh, present, as this will definitely tarnish the uh, final result and it will only uh, exacerbate that issue uh, as you uh, move forward with more paint applications. I've already given this uh, model a soapy water bath, which kind of gets rid of all the um, uh, mold release agent, uh, any grease from your fingers, uh, and, and dirt and debris as well. Uh, so it's pretty, pretty uh, dust and, and debris free. However, that was a little while ago. So even if you think there might be anything left over, you can just go ahead and uh, use your airbrush after it's been pressurized and kind of just give it a once over. This will ensure a nice, clean, smooth finish to any paint job uh, that uh, that you're about to uh, do. Also, it's it's a good idea to have uh, your your model in manageable pieces. Obviously, for tanks, uh, you'd be having the the hull and chassis separate uh, from the turret. And I've also kept the uh, commander's hatch separate from the commander's cupola uh, in anticipation of adding a figure at a later date. I've also added um, this product called. Mr. Masking Neo, or sorry, Mr. Masking Sol Neo, uh, to the attachment points. So I've just dabbed a little drop on each of the uh, attachment points where you would uh, then attach it to the commander's cupola. All right, let's get on to the. Now, before we uh, get into painting, uh, one more thing I'd like to mention is uh, another great resource for uh, people looking to start painting with uh, true acrylics is uh, Ammo uh, by MIG, uh, How to Paint with Acrylics. This is a great modeling guide, uh, or painting guide, sorry, uh, for uh, learning the ins and outs of uh, how to properly spray down and lay down acrylics. So it goes into great detail as to, like I was saying before, what the pressure should be at uh, for spraying, the uh, ratio and dilution of thinner to paint ratios, uh, and it basically explains everything that you would absolutely need to know um, before before actually starting onto uh, onto a model. Um, we're gonna get into mixing up our uh, paint mixture now. I like to shoot for a 60-40, 60% thinner, 40% paint. Uh, they recommend 50-50. I like to spray at a little uh, slightly more diluted uh, ratio. It just helps with uh, where my comfort level is at with, with airbrushing and, and, and I find it uh, works well for me and lays down a nice even smooth coat. Uh, again, before you start um, any paint mixing, make sure that everything is nicely uh, shaken up. I've added steel balls uh, to each of the paint pods, which will facilitate a nice, uh, a nice mix. Gets uh, everything from the bottom all agitated and ready to go. Uh, like I said again, we'll be using uh, black, black black surface primer, uh, cutting it with the acrylic thinner by MIG ammo and uh, adding some transpirator which also helps with uh, drying time. I find it uh, elongates the drying time, uh, allowing for, for a further smoother finish. I, I ran into a lot of actually problems when I first started out with true acrylic painting. Uh, I, tried, I tried painting exactly as if it were like Tamiya. But to me, it's more of a more of a lacquer, so you can paint in thicker uh, in thicker uh, lines. Uh, with acrylics, you really need to be uh, wary of the surface tension uh, that is built into this polymer-based uh, paint, uh, and it it absolutely needs to go down in in, in light uh, coats, like very thin coats. You want to build up that paint at a steady rate and try not to rush through your painting when when uh, painting with acrylics. So let's get into it. When I begin mixing uh, mixing up my paints, I like to uh, actually start with the acrylic thinner first. Uh, this just prevents the straight 
thicker solution of the actual primer from uh, nesting in the nozzle just before spraying. Uh, I also like to overguesstimate how much paint that I need to use so that I don't have to repeat this process uh, during the painting uh, stage. So we're going to try to shoot for roughly 40 drops of each and see what the uh, paint solution looks like after that. I'm going to go ahead and add some transpirator. I will typically only put a few drops in, but I'm going to cut this larger mixture by 10%, so I'm going to put about eight drops of this in here, seven to eight drops, now that we're at 80 drops of thinner and uh, surface primer combined. So let's start with seven and see what that gets us. I just use a, an old brush to kind of stir the mixture inside the pod so that we're not uh, messing up any pipettes and whatnot. And you really wanna kind of run the paint up the side of the cup and you want to see the paint run down nice and quickly and smoothly but you don't want it absolutely separating from the thinner if it's separa separating from the thinner then you know it's far too thin and you'll have to add some more paint and if you're still not sure you can uh, kind of gauge by how well it's spraying outside so just practice on uh, on some spare plastic or or the um, or tissue paper I would recommend going the uh, spare um, spare plastic route because tissue paper actually absorbs the paint so you're not going to get a true uh, you're not going to necessarily get a true feel for it and starting on the back side of, of your model is the best way to uh, to practice uh, or to test your mixture if you don't have any spare pr plastic on hand It's a really nice, uh, nice pattern. So we're going to continue priming uh, the the whole vehicle, and uh, we'll see what it looks like at the end. So I'm going to start with the hatch here. Uh, this is only due to the fact that I'm going to have to at some point flip this hatch around. Uh, so I'm going to start with this. Hopefully it'll be all dry, ready to go, so I can flip it around, stick it, stick it in reverse, and then have at it again. Like I said, this will be nice, fine paint buildup, not rushing it to achieve a nice smooth finish. Here's a better example of seeing how the opacity slowly builds through several layers of thin, even coats. So let's talk about acrylic paint. What really drew me to acrylic paints, aside from the fact that they're virtually odorless, and if you do a lot of your painting indoors, like I do, you can essentially paint for days without getting high off of the fumes, which means one could be super productive. But it was actually the wide range of color sets offered by companies like Ammo and AK Interactive. Now we have more or less a one-stop shop for all of our coloring needs. Be it colors specific to a theater of war, colors specific to vehicles, airplanes, and even uniforms, and even right down to colors specific to individual parts on vehicles or equipment. Now don't get me wrong, Companies like Tamiya offer a great range of paints as well, and I used to exclusively use Tamiya paints just because they were so robust and typically were f flawless in how they uh, went down, but uh, I really don't enjoy 
mixing paints and for example you can take like Tamiya's dark yellow for as a German uh, World War II camouflage dark yellow they only have one and now through acrylic sets we can obtain early war German uh, yellow late war German yellow even by the decade to Russian greens during the Cold War just like we'll be using for this T62's camouflage color convenient ready to use right out of the bottle and in recent years acrylic paints have certainly been at the forefront for most modelers however I think most modelers including myself when I first started painting with acrylics made the mistake or just didn't realize that alcohol based paints or lacquer based paints like Tamiya do not spray identically to how acrylic paint goes down so acrylic paint being a water based product has high surface tension whereas Tamiya's alcohol or lacquer based uh, paints go down a lot smoother the surface tension is a lot lower and in getting the most out of your water based acrylics to ensure a smooth flat finish we have to break the surface tension and the only way we break the surface tension is by laying thin even coats until we build up a nice opaque layer of paint whereas with Tamiya being an alcohol based paint you can get away with applying this paint in thicker layers as the leveling properties are a lot better. However, trying to do this with acrylic paints, you run the risk of having an uneven surface and even a grainy surface that will essentially ruin uh, the overall finish of your model. You'll notice from time to time throughout the course of this video that I actually spray paint onto the tissue paper and off of the model. This is only to eject any paint buildup that is accumulated on the tip of your needle. Being acrylic, it dries very quickly, and if you are airbrushing for any extended period of time, this will help happen regardless of how thin your paint mixture is, or even if you've added drying retarder. This just avoids the paint buildup from barfing, essentially barfing onto your model, creating an unpleasant look. Sometimes you'll find during long painting sessions an excess of paint actually builds up on the tip of the needle to the point where no matter how hard you pull back on your trigger, absolutely no paint comes out. In this case, simply unscrew your nozzle, take an old brush dipped in either thinner or airbrush cleaner and simply wipe away the excess globule. In this case, I used Viejo airbrush cleaner simply because it's what I had on hand at the time. I spent a lot of time painting the details on the fenders, and the lower running gear for that matter, and you'll see me jumping back and forth from area to area here. It's good to take the extra time and effort uh, when painting uh, hard to reach areas like this, only to ensure that nothing gets missed. I know it would have been a lot easier painting the fenders separately, however with the fender back brackets being in photo edge, as well as the conduits being uh, attached to the hull and the fender, it was actually kind of impossible on this build. But if you build this kit without the fender and fuel update set from Legend Productions, then I would highly recommend painting the fender separately. I know this could be the tedious part of the painting process, but your time and effort is well spent here. Moving on to the final section of the hull, it was really satisfying seeing the model become one homogenous color. And I think it's worth mentioning that the kit supplied louvers and photo etch grill for the engine deck actually wasn't enough to uh, prevent the light shining through. There is a uh, viewport on the turret big enough, and if you look through it just right, you can actually see light shining through the engine deck. Now, I didn't catch that until it was too late, and if I were to do this kit again, I would definitely take the time to uh, prime the interior of the hull, at least uh, just below the uh, engine deck to ensure no, no light shines through. And here's the completely primed lower hull. Yes, finally! Oh, did I forget to mention that we still have the turret to do? The turret pretty much went off without a hitch, and the aluminum barrel actually took the primer really well. 
So I'll leave you guys to the music for this segment of the video. Ah, time to review all this wonderful work we've done. And look, we have to do some touch-ups. Luckily there was only a few areas requiring attention, and I didn't even bother with filling the uh, underside of the fender as that'll get covered with pigments and another weathering. So for this I'm cutting a section of a really high grit sanding stick. I recommend using anywhere between at least 500 to 1000 uh, for uh, sanding out any imperfections that uh, you may have found. And then when you've sanded down at least to expose the uh, plastic underneath, I would recommend going with a 1000 or even a 1500 grit sanding sponge or sanding paper to then smooth and polish the edges of, your, uh, of where the paint is receded, only so that there's no ridges left behind when you go to respray this area. I got a little carried away with sanding this portion and I actually had to go back over it with some Mr. Surfacer 1200 just to re-level the surface and then go ahead and sand it back down. With all the problem areas sanded down and corrected, it's time to go ahead and lay down some paint again, which will finish off the priming process. And even after you've gone back over these areas with paint and you still find that there is a little bit of a ridge present, go ahead and use your 1000 grit or 1500 grit sanding sponge and you can actually feather this out no problem without damaging the paint. Look at that, all that time and effort and the results don't look too shabby. Here's our completely prime model tank. I'll leave you guys with one more tip. I would strongly recommend letting this set and cure for a period of roughly 24 hours or so uh, before moving on to the uh, next paint layer. Uh, what this will do is this will allow it to fully and completely harden uh, to a nice strong finish which will be extremely beneficial when uh, employing the uh, hairspray uh, chipping technique if that's what uh, you decide to go ahead and do. Um, what this does is, is creates that strong finish uh, so that when you use the abrasive action of rubbing with a uh, strong bristled brush uh, to create your chips. Uh, it'll actually mitigate working your way right through to the bare pl plastic finish which is extremely hard to then cover up and rework into the overall uh, 
paint job. So for that reason, definitely let this sit, put it put it aside for at least 24 hours, let it fully cure and harden to a nice strong finish, and uh, you won't uh, run into that issue later on. Thanks guys for watching. I really hope you guys learned something. I know this ran a little longer than I anticipated, so hopefully you guys are still uh, still awake. Um, I know painting with acrylics for me, in my experience, was a little difficult when I first started out. So I hope uh, I hope this has kind of eased uh, some concerns that you may have had. We look forward to seeing you guys in the next one. Please uh, leave a comment if you have any further questions, and uh, click that subscribe button. Cheers, guys.